Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. I have a BS in physics that I earned back in 2000 with a minor in mathematics from the University of Washington. I've been programming for the nice I've been programming for the past 19 years at various companies and for about the past 8 years I've wanted to go back and earn a PhD when I can get the time and motivation to do it. So I've been studying physics kind of on my own and you've probably seen some of my videos on uh, the introduction to electrodynamics by Griffiths and I wanted to cover the introduction to thermal physics by Daniel V. Schroeder. So this is the textbook. I believe this is second edition. This is the textbook I'll be covering. I'm going to go through this entire thing. It's like an open study notebook type video. I'm studying this book deeply and I'm telling you what I'm learning from it. You can treat it as a lecture or you can treat it as a supplement. Do with it what you will. If you complain that I'm following the book too closely and that my content is correct and it matches what is in the book, then I'm going to take that as a compliment. So that's what I'm doing. So Schroeder is a popular textbook. Uh, there's other textbooks that are commonly used as well. Uh, this is not those textbooks. This is Schroeder. Um, the way that this book is organized is he allows you to go through the textbook to either study statistical mechanics or thermodynamics. And I'll talk a little bit about what those are. So thermal physics breaks into two branches. Uh, it can break into thermodynamics and this is the study of temperature, pressure, volume, um, uh, entropy, I think it's Q is the quantity for entropy, and things like that. So thermodynamics studies these big quantities. It's more relatable to the real world because this is the things that we can see, touch, and feel and that we're familiar with. The other area is called statistical mechanics. often abbreviated as STATMEC. And this studies the motion of atoms and molecules and even subatomic particles. The nice thing is that these two fields are related. So temperature, even though it is a macro quantity, has a micro meaning. And this behavior of these guys here and their properties will affect those values up there as well. So they are related. And if you want to learn thermal physics, you really need to understand both of these separately and together as well. The nice thing about thermal physics is that applications of this field are literally everywhere in the world. This is truly the king of practical physics because it applies to almost everything imaginable in some form or another. One of the drawbacks of thermal physics is that it applies everywhere. So everybody thinks they understand this. Very few people actually do. So you're going to have a lot of fun, like debunking a lot of things that you think you know about temperature, pressure, and volume, and learning some new things. So it, you really have to have an open mind to this course. I'm going to get you some notes here about if you're trying to learn physics. So you are one of those people that's on the internet and you're actually trying to learn physics. The first thing you need to do is you need to get the textbook. I have a link in the description. It's an Amazon affiliate link, so I'll get a few bucks if you buy it through that link. You can also find various other ways to get the textbook, but I don't know how you can study a topic such as this without the textbook. Okay, so this textbook you're going to read and you are going to solve the problems on your own. Okay, the other thing you could do is you can watch my videos. You can treat them as a lecture. Uh, you can treat them as a supplement to the lecture. If you are taking a course in thermal physics and the professor doesn't follow the book very closely, you can use my videos to kind of help you understand what the book is saying a little better. And so the idea here is that the more you expose yourself to the information and the different medium that you use, the different media, so like if you're watching videos and reading books and practicing problems and talking with your friends, then that's gonna maximize your ability to learn the subject. With speaking of which, you also want to talk with others. So this would include other physics students. It would include uh, physicists that have already learned this material. It would also include people that aren't physicists and don't necessarily want to learn this material. By discussing the ideas that you're learning with these people, it'll help you reinforce those ideas and understand what's really important. And the last thing is to give your brain space. So how many times have I been studying something really complicated? I just don't get it, I just don't get it. I give myself one night, maybe two nights to sleep on it. 
and then I have a really solid understanding of it. This happens again and again and again. So that's a pattern that you're going to see is just to give your brain time to digest it. You might want to wonder how you can get a good grade. So we're going to talk, I'm going to give you some tips. These are my tips. They're my suggestions. You can take them or leave them, whatever you want to do. Uh, the reason why you want to get a good grade is because thermal physics is often treated as a weeder course, meaning that they want you to take this course and if you fail to just give up on physics. Okay. But you're not going to give up so easily, are you? So you want to get a good grade. So there's two areas that I would put here. One is the work hard area and the other one is the rest area. So working hard, you have to study, you have to practice, you have to prepare, you have to know your material, you have to meet with the TAs and the professors, you have to do the homework, and not just like a little bit, but be very good at the homework, and you have to get good grades in the test, right? So you have to study for those tests. There's a lot of work you have to put in. However, I think everybody nowadays realizes, it wasn't so much, it wasn't so much common knowledge back in the 90s, but nowadays we realize that rest is just as important as working hard. If you do all exercise but never rest, you will not gain physical strength, right? So you need to get plenty of sleep. And I recommend taking your phone and putting that in a drawer or setting it aside. Just go to sleep early and wake up early. Sleep is probably the most important thing you can do. Also, consider the food you're eating, okay? I don't want you to be one of those wild health nuts, but Consider that maybe eating processed foods, maybe eating too much food or too little food is probably not good for you. If you have the opportunity to, you should learn to cook for yourself using raw ingredients. It's not that hard and it's much healthier than the stuff you buy in the store. I would exercise. When I was studying physics, I was running. I was running three times a week. I had run cross country in high school. And so that was something I like to do and I think that really helped, okay? The other thing is uh, do not play with the chemicals that alter your mind, okay? Obviously this includes like drugs that aren't prescription drugs. If your doctor says take a drug, you should take the drug, okay, period. But uh, like I, I would include things like alcohol, tobacco, uh, even coffee or tea uh, that have caffeine in there. And of course marijuana and things like that. So these chemicals, they alter your mind and your brain needs to recover and strengthen itself and needs to be in peak condition. And if you're taking drugs to stimulate the brain, or to relax the brain, then the brain can't function the way it's supposed to be. It can't be a healthy organ like it's supposed to be. And another thing I would add is your social habits. So hopefully you have a network of friends, you have family that you can rely on, a home base that you can go back to. These social habits are pretty important, especially because if you think about it, we're not just mechanical devices. We are, we are machines that have a mind. We have uh, sentient, we have free will, we have all that kind of stuff, but we also have emotions. We also have all these things and being with people, we're a tribal animal. We're, we're a herd animal, right? And so you need to develop those social relationships. So yeah, so these things are important. Working hard, resting. Oh, I, sh I should also mention taking a day off, right? So one or two days a week, you need to just take it off and just relax and just do uh, nothing. You know, just give your brain and your body a chance to rest. Okay, that's very important. Anyway, if you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can do the typical. You can subscribe. You can ring the bell. You can click like. Share with others this video. Put it on social media, whatever you want to do. Um, you can also join us on Discord. So I have a Discord channel. Links in the description below. And if you want to give your money to me, I have a Patreon account that you can donate to that would I would greatly appreciate any kind of donations. Anyway, guys, I hope this series is to your liking and actually helps you develop a solid understanding of thermal physics. And uh, you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.